Hey, welcome to HTBB Online. It's so good to have you with us today. If we've not met before, my name is Stu. And I'm not Abby, but no. I arrived. <laughs> my name is Tony. We're so glad you're joining us here today. Um, and especially if this is your first time, just say hello in the chat and we'd love to say hi back to you too. Today is Palm Sunday, and that marks the start of Holy Week, where we think about the journey that Jesus took in order to go to the cross, to die, but then to be raised to life again on Easter Sunday. We've got loads of great content yeah, planned this so week. Exciting. It's very exciting. We're going to fill you in on that later on in the service. But for today, this Palm Sunday, Jacintha has got a great message for us. And at any point throughout the service, if you'd like someone to pray with you, just hit the request prayer button. Or if you're watching this throughout the week, just go to our website, hdbb.org slash prayer, and one of our pastors will love to pray with you. Mm. And right now, we're going to go into a time of worship. And before we do so, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your presence that is with us today, Lord. And we are so expectant to meet with you as we join in songs, mm. Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship.
Let us pray. Lord, we pray for our world right now, God. We thank you that you are the one who holds the whole world in your hands, O oh Father. And we pray for your compassion and your justice, O oh Father, to reach through all the nations, O oh Father, who is in need right now, God. We ask that, Lord, you will bring your provision, you will bring your healing, you will bring um, solutions, O oh Father, that only you can provide, mm. O oh God, Lord. We just choose to lift up the name of Jesus, O oh Father, among these nations, O oh Father, and declare that you are the Lord over the nations, Lord. And Father, we lift up this beautiful nation of Malaysia into your hands, God. I thank you for this country and every single person in it. And Lord, as we move into the endemic phase of COVID-19, Father, and navigate all the changes and SOPs and getting to grips with everything that's going on now, Father, would you just uh, give us wisdom? Would you give us peace where there might be anxiety, Father? Um, and we just also thank you um, that this might now be a chance to see loved ones or be reunited with family members, Father. If if there is anyone who is suffering with COVID-19, we pray healing upon you in Jesus' name. Um, and Lord, above all, we just ask that your name would be lifted high in the nation of Malaysia. And Lord, we thank you so much for the Alpha Weekend Away that just happened, Lord. Mm. We thank you for your presence with us. We thank you that you are speaking to so many ones. And we pray for the weeks that's coming ahead as well, oh Father, that you continue to draw the guests closer to you, oh Father. And we pray that they will as well take a step of faith or wanting to know you more as mm. well, God. And Father, we thank you so much for Easter, this time of year where we can uh, reflect upon Jesus' death, but also celebrate in his resurrection, Father. Uh, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that that means that we can be in right relationship with you, that we can know forgiveness from our sins, and we celebrate that today. We pray for everything that's going on in our church, HTBB, but every church across Malaysia and across the world in this season, Father. We pray that Jesus' name would be lifted high through all services and all programs and that um, many, many people would come to know you this Easter season. Would this be a time of new life and of new beginnings as we reflect and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus? We pray all of this in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. 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 And if you like any prayer throughout the service, just click on the prayer request button and someone will be there to pray with you. Brilliant. Uh, well, now is a time to watch HTBB News. That's where we get all the updates about what's going on in HTBB Church. And during this time, we're going to give. Uh, you're going to see two QR codes come up on screen so you can scan one of those. And um, thank you in advance for your generosity yes, for giving to you. the work of HTBB Church. Let's watch HTBB News and give.
every year, we go through the usual cycle of life. School, homework, your mates, the fam, and boom, you're in the thick of another year. There are so many things that stack up and you find yourself running out of time. But do we ever take a hot second to think? What's the point of it all? Have you ever stopped to think, hold up? Could there be more to life than this? Youth Alpha is a series of interactive sessions which explores questions about life, faith, and meaning. It's a space where anyone can ask all kinds of questions, like, what is sin? Who is Jesus? And who is Bintang Bear? Anyone can say what they think and hear what others have to say as well. Here at HTBB, we're starting Youth Alpha on Sunday, the 24th of April. So pick a friend and register now if you're age 11 to 17 years old. It'll be super fun. I'll see you there. Easter is the best time of the year. It's where we remember Jesus' journey to the cross, and it's at the cross where we see clearly who Jesus is and all that he's done for us. We start with daily devotions on Holy Week leading up to the Easter weekend, and then come and be a part of our Good Friday service, a creative service happening on site and online at 8.30 p.m. And finally, on Easter Sunday, come and celebrate the resurrection, the birthday of hope. Bring a friend and we'll see you there. And as if you watch it on HTV News, we have an exciting lineup leading up to Easter yes. Sunday. Still, I think I need you to send me text reminders each day because there's so much. There's content. a lot. Yeah, <laughs> there I don't is a lot going on. Of it. But you don't need text reminders. I'm going to give you a quick tip. If you go to our YouTube channel <laughs> and you click subscribe and then you go to the little bell button and you click that one, what will happen is you're going to get reminders every day about our Holy Week devotions. So they kick off tomorrow, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there's going to be a brand new devotion each day of Holy Week. And then that culminates in Good Friday. What's happening on Good Friday? So on Good Friday, we're going to meet on site in the room and also online at 8.30 p.m., not a.m. Yes. <laughs> so join yeah. us, invite a friend, yeah. and we'd love to see you there. It's going to be fun. That's like a creative service. There's going to be worship, readings. It's, it's going to be brilliant. Come along to that. And then on Easter Sunday... It's kind of the big climax. Jesus is alive. We're gathering as a church to celebrate again online uh, and on site. All the usual times, 9.30, 11.30, 5 p.m. These are brilliant services to invite a friend yeah, to. Yeah, I agree. Great services. So bring along family members, friends, anyone. Uh, grab someone. Either come on site or join us online. And that's not all. Very excitingly. Right now, as of today, um, HTBB Worship have a brand new song that we've just released. You might remember a while ago, we gathered in one of our services and we did a live recording, mm -hmm. a live worship recording. I was there. <laughs> you were there, yeah. Lots of people were there. Your voice could be on this song. Well, it's available to stream right now. You can check it out on Spotify or any platform that you regularly consume music. You'll find it, Gospel of Grace by HTBB Worship. And right now, we have Jacinta who's going to mm. share with us a Palm Sunday message. We believe it's going to be great. And Jacinta is one of our pastors at HBB. And I just love how she's so passionate mm. in just sharing the word. And she always brings, you know, creative elements in her sharing. So let's lean in together as we hear from her. 
Hey, it's so good to be with you all today. In case we haven't met, my name is Jacintha and I'm one of the pastors here at HTBB. Um, and as Stu and Tony mentioned earlier on, uh, it is Palm Sunday today. It is the day that Jesus enters Jerusalem in the final week before He died on the cross and then three days later rose from the dead. And as we enter into this Holy Week, as we enter it, trying to make sense of Jesus' death and resurrection, I want to talk to you today about what we can draw from the passage about who Jesus is. And as we read it, my question is, who are we and how can we live in light of who Jesus is? Now let's read the passage together. You can follow along on the screen. Matthew chapter 21, verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with a colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and He will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of Him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and they asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Verse 12, Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. Amen. Now, this is the first day of the last week of Jesus' life. And I wonder if anyone has ever asked you this before, if you had only one week left to live, what would you do? I don't know about you, but when I was in college and university, this was quite a common icebreaker question. And it's quite an, an intense question, right? You know, I much prefer questions like, are you an early bird or a night owl, cereal or sausages for breakfast? If you were a kitchen appliance, what would you be and why? Well, in light of the passage today, if you had one week left to live, how would you live? I began asking myself this question when I was 16. You see, I grew up in Kuching and every year there's a music festival that's held just about an hour away from the city. And back then it was very small, didn't have the reputation it does now. And every year it was a highlight for me and my friends to go together. And, you know, one or two parents would come along too just to keep an eye on us. And so that Friday, I was getting ready to go. I was packing my bags. I was excited to spend the weekend with my school friends at this festival. And I can't remember exactly what happened now, but as you might expect of a passive-aggressive 16-year-old, me, I got into an argument, probably with one of my siblings, and then my mom said I couldn't go. And I felt guilty, but also a little sad. And so when my dad heard about it, he and my mom spoke, and then he said to me, take your bags, we're going for a drive. An hour later, we reached the venue of the music festival. My dad came out of the car, he gave me a hug, he asked me to take care of myself, and then both my parents drove off. That was the last time I ever saw him, because a few days later, he got into a helicopter that went missing for 16 days. It was later found, and none of the men had survived. If I had known my dad had one week left to live, I would have hugged him a little tighter, said I love him a little more, and maybe argue with my siblings a little less. I looked at this question online, and here are a few responses I came across. If I had only one week left, I would 
go skydiving, I'd go on a solo trip, I would make amends, I would spend the rest of my life with my family and loved ones, I would stack my fridge for my husband until he gets used to cooking for himself. And this one stood out to me. I will live as if I were going to live forever and that what I did mattered. Well, in our passage today, Jesus lived his last week as if he was going to live forever because he does and that what he did mattered. The passage we just read basically has three parts, verses 1 to 7, before Jesus entered Jerusalem, verses 8 to 11, as he enters Jerusalem, and verses 12 to 14, Jesus at the temple in Jerusalem. And there's so much going on in this passage, right? You know, Jesus enters the city on a donkey, the crowd spread their cloaks, they wave palm branches in the air, they shout, Hosanna to the son of David. And it says in verse 10, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? Who is this Jesus? And today, that question is being asked still. You know, Time magazine calls Jesus the most influential figure in all of history. Over 2.3 billion people in the world believe in Jesus. Schools, designer brands, and football players have been named after him. Swear words have been dedicated in his name. But so have the lips of struggling individuals, heartbroken mums, and ordinary people like me and you going about our daily lives. This passage answers that question, who is he? Well, firstly, Jesus is a humble king. In verse 2, Jesus instructed the disciples to go to the village ahead of them, and at once they will find a donkey tied there with a colt by her. Untie them, and they would bring them to Jesus. Now, you might be wondering, why a donkey? You know, you'd expect a king to enter on a horse, yes, but a donkey? You know, we're just... Donkeys a bit easier to find than horses. Were they just constantly running around Jerusalem? Well, verse 5 tells us the donkey had been intentionally chosen to fulfill a prophecy about Jesus being the Messiah, the one who would save the people of Israel. Did you know that Jesus fulfilled at least 300 Old Testament prophecies? And this is just one of them. You know, the text from Zechariah 9, 9 to 11, it says, Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. Is he humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And he shall speak peace to the nations, and he will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Now, I don't know anything about the military, but if there's one thing I do know, it's that you can't go to battle with a donkey. This passage says, the chariot will be cut off, the war horse as well. His rule will be from sea to sea, and yet he shall speak peace to the nations. The Jews were hoping that Jesus would destroy the Roman Empire, and a donkey is the last animal that could do that. And, and more than that, it's likely that Jesus wasn't even riding the donkey, but the baby donkey, the colt. It must have been so little that Jesus' feet might even have been dragging on the floor, and it would have looked a little silly. And yet scripture says, God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise, and in that to be set free. I think about Jackie Pullinger, through whose ministry God helped set many people free. Jackie was a 21-year-old student when she boarded the cheapest ship she could find, and then she prayed to know when to disembark. And so she ended up in Hong Kong and came to a place called the Walled City. And it was a lawless city where there were drug addicts, gangs, and sex workers. And Jackie has spent over 50 years sharing the love of Jesus in Hong Kong. And she's seen thousands come off drugs, set free, and start new lives. She says, God wants us to have soft hearts and hard feet. Soft hearts that are first broken out of compassion for the needs of those around us and hard feet to persevere in loving others day after day. In this passage, Jesus exemplifies this too. For the sake of those he was serving, Jesus didn't mind looking silly. He might even be saying, to be like him, we need tender hearts and a bit of a thick skin. What kind of king is this? Well, I think this points to the second thing that we can draw from the passage about who Jesus is. And the second thing is that Jesus is the Messiah who saves. You know, as Jesus entered Jerusalem, it says in verse 8, a very large crowd, they spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them 
on the road. The crowds shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Now, you might be wondering, what does this mean? Well, he, in, in Hebrew, Hosanna basically means save us now. And this was significant because it called to an, an idea that existed for hundreds of years, that the Messiah, the Savior, would come from the line of King David in the Old Testament. In other words, they were saying that Jesus, who is from the line of David, is the Messiah they had been waiting for all these years. And yes, Jesus will save them. And maybe you're sitting here, you're wondering that today. Maybe you're shouting to Jesus, Hosanna, save me. And if that's you, Jesus does offer salvation to you. But as we saw in the prophecy from Zechariah, Jesus is a king on a donkey. He offers a different kind of saving. You see, the Jews who are walking into Jerusalem with him, they were hoping for a political salvation from the Roman Empire. The Romans had been ruling over them in unjust ways and they wanted freedom. Jesus was saying, I have come to set you free, not on a war horse, but a donkey, not through war, but peace, not just for life on this earth, but for all eternity to bring salvation by serving under, not lording over. And so Jesus enters Jerusalem and the first place he went to was the temple. And this was intentional because the third thing that we see from this passage is that Jesus is the true temple of God. Now, if you're reading this for the first time, it might seem a little of an awkward transition to you. You know, here he goes from almost like a parade-like situation. He goes from turning heads to the temple where he's turning tables. And this isn't like the DJ kind of turning tables. Most kings, at the end of the procession, they would take a seat at the throne of the palace. But Jesus, at the end of his procession, would turn tables at the temple. And this is one of the few times the Gospels record Jesus' anger. When I read this again, I wondered, why was Jesus so angry? You know, it says in verses 12 and 13, he overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. And then he said to them, it is written, my house will be called a a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. You see, the temple represented where people could go to receive salvation. They would bring an unblemished animal and then they would offer it to the priest. And as they held the animal, they would confess their sins and their sin would be transferred to the innocent animal. The animal would then die, taking with it the guilt of the person who offered it to the priest. And then the priest would then take the blood of this animal and once a year, On the Day of Atonement, he would go through a curtain into the Holy of Holies, the very dwelling place of God, and on behalf of us, offer atonement for our sin. And that's what atonement means. It means to offer reparations for our wrongdoing so that we can be reconciled with God at one moment, at one with God. And this is what Jesus offers to you, open access to be fully reconciled with God. But being one with God was very far from the reality on the ground. You see, what was happening at the time is that after people traveled miles and miles to the temple, they would either bring their animals with them, or what was more common is they would buy them when they get to Jerusalem. Now, the problem was when the animals were brought to the religious leaders, they would often inspect them and they would find fault with the animals. So they would get them to buy the animals that were being sold at the temple instead. And then they would charge really inflated rates. It's kind of like, now that the borders are open, you drive, say, five hours to Singapore, you finally get there only to find you have to buy a bottle of mineral water for like 20 ringgit. And you know, it is Malaysian water. (laughs) Kind of annoying, right? So that's strike one. But not only that, to purchase an animal, they would need to pay temple tax. Uh, It wasn't enough to use regular money. They needed to use the temple's own currency, and that's strike two. To make matters worse, the sellers, the money changers, and the tax collectors who all benefited from this business, they had all taken over the outer court, the only place where non-Jews could come and pray. And so by saying, My house will be called the house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. Was Jesus saying, you can't have any financial transactions here, no more youth bake sales? No, Jesus was really saying 
these religious leaders were pretending to offer atonement, but really they were profiting off of people's misery. And then they were going back to the temple almost as a hideout. Jesus called it a den of robbers, and dens are a place of darkness. But by calling this out, Jesus was turning on the light. Where in your life do you need Jesus to turn on the light today? You can invite Jesus, the light of the world, into your heart because the truth will set you free. In John's Gospel, it says, When this happened, Jesus said, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. So Jesus was not just cleansing the temple. He was saying, I am the temple. This earthly temple will be made redundant by a perfect, unblemished temple, Jesus himself. You see, every time the priest brought the sacrifice on the Day of Atonement, three things were needed, a temple, a high priest, and a sacrifice. And as I read this passage, I hadn't seen it before, but Jesus became not only the temple, He also became the priest who goes between the guilty one and God. And such is His love for us that not only is He the true temple, and through Him we too are the temple of God, not only is He our great high priest, and through Him we are a royal priesthood, but to complete the transaction, He did what none of us can do. The third thing, only what He can. On the cross, He became our sacrifice, crown of thorns on His head and nails in His hands, and He died for me and for you. What does this mean for us? What does all of this say about who we are? In The Lion King, which I personally think is the best Disney movie of all time, shout out to you Lion King fans, Simba had been living a Hakuna Matata kind of life. And after his father died, he left the pack and went to live with his friends, Timon the meerkat and Pumbaa the warthog. Don't worry, I'm going somewhere with this. There's this scene where he's all grown up now and he and the love of his life, Nala, they get into a heated argument about the past. And so Simba gets upset. He runs off into the plains of Africa. And all of a sudden, he runs into Rafiki. And Rafiki says, you're Mufasa's son. Your father is alive. And Simba's like, wait, what do you mean? So Rafiki leads him to a pool of water where Simba then leans in. He looks into the water and he sees his father's face. He looks into the clouds and he hears his father's voice. And it's this moving scene because all these years, he lost his sense of self. But in this one moment of encounter with his father, Mufasa reminded him who he was. Remember who you are, Simba. And then he said, remember, you are my son. You are who your father says you are. And if like Simba, you're questioning your identity, God, your heavenly father, wants to remind you, you are his son, you are his daughter, he loves you. It's no surprise then that within these few verses alone, there are at least six references to Old Testament prophecies reminding us who Jesus is. And the Bible is God's love letter to you. And I think God wants to use these pages to remind you who you really are. Because of Jesus' death on the cross, He sees you as forgiven, redeemed, and set free. If Jesus is the King of kings and heaven is His throne, Scripture reminds us that you are a citizen of heaven. If Jesus is the Messiah who saves, Scripture says, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. If Jesus is the true temple of God, Scripture says that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you. And as the Zechariah passage reminded us earlier, Jesus speaks peace to the nations and He sets the prisoners free. I um, asked earlier if you had one week left to live, how would you spend it? And I found it so striking and so inspiring when recently I read that in Ukraine, where war has broken out for more than a month now, the residents of Kyiv, they came together to put this art installation in the shape of the Ukrainian national symbol, the trident. For many of them, the shadow of death has loomed over them. Many have been quoted to say, I am so aware that life for me may end in the next few days. 
And yet these remarkable people, they came together in what might well be their last week of life to make art. This trident symbolizes freedom and it's a beautiful act of defiance. While other parts of the country are being attacked from the sky, this symbol sends a message to the very same sky these Ukrainians are fighting for freedom. There is a message so important for them to convey that it was worth risking their lives for. You see, the things that are worth living for are also the things that are worth dying for. And I'm reminded that in Jesus last week, He gathered His best friends, He celebrated with them over a meal, He spent time with His Father, He forgave His enemies, His posture was of gratitude and surrender, He was kind to those who persecuted Him. And in the Bible in one year, Nikki Gumbel says, you may not have had a great beginning in life, but you can have a great finish. How then do we live? Your life matters to God, and it is for your life He gave up His life. He died for you so you could live like Him, humble, surrendered, and kind. So on this Palm Sunday, may we have a fresh revelation of who Jesus is, May we remember who we are, that we are loved, and that Holy Spirit, would you help us live better, fuller lives in light of who Jesus is. Amen. Holy Spirit, help us to live like Jesus did, to be transformed into His likeness. We can't do it on our own, so we need you. I'm just going to invite the Holy Spirit to come now. You might want to just put your hands out in front of you. And I'm just going to invite the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, would you be speaking to every one of us, wherever we're tuning in from, whatever circumstance we're going through. Would you speak to us now? This idea of who Jesus is might be new to you. And for the first time, you're beginning to understand um, that Jesus loves you and that you want to invite Him into your life. And if that's your love to pray, um, a prayer with you, you can repeat this after me. It's just a prayer that goes, thank you, sorry, and please. Um, and it's just a way to invite Jesus into your life. So you can repeat the words after me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. Thank you that you gave your life for me. So my life has immeasurable value. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things that I've done that are not pleasing to you, and I receive your forgiveness. Please, would you come into my life as I walk with you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. As I was writing the sermon, I, I just had a sense that there might be someone here who resonated with uh, what Nikki Gumbel said about you may not have had a great beginning, but, uh, but God wants you to have a great finish. If that's you, um, I believe God wants to give you courage. You might even be thinking right now, who can I make amends with? I think God is pleased with that and He wants to give you courage to follow through. You might also have felt like Simba, that you have left the path, left the pack a little bit and God wants to bring you back to Him. If that's you, I think God wants to remind you that you are His son, you are His daughter. I also had a sense that there might be someone here who in the past, maybe someone close to you, someone that you trust, has said the words worthless over you. If, God, if that's you, I think God wants to say, you have purpose, you're not worthless, you have purpose and your life is of immeasurable value because Jesus died for you. And lastly, I think there might be someone here who, when hearing the Jackie Pullinger story, you felt like that, you felt like your heart is being broken for the needs around you and God wants to empower you by His Spirit to support what's going on around you. It might be in your family, it might be in your workplace, it might be in your university. Um, but regardless of what you're going through, we would love to pray with you. Click Request Prayer and someone will come and pray with you. And let's finish with this final song of worship. See the King of 
Lord, we thank you for your wit. We thank you for your faithfulness that you have shown on the cross for us. So God, we thank you that your love is for us, Lord. And we just receive your love once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And if you would like prayer still, you know, our online pastors are still here ready to pray with you. So just hit onto the request prayer button. Don't forget our Holy Week devotions kick off tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see you on our YouTube channel for those. And also our Good Friday service and our Easter Sunday services coming up. Don't forget, invite a friend, bring someone along. We would love to see you there. Have a great week. See you soon. See ya.